What's up, street foodies, pen pals, anyone else who might be listening? This is not an official episode of anything that I normally do, okay? But I saw a great movie last night, and I wanted to tell you about it because I feel like it lines up with a lot of what I usually talk about on my channel. Clash between cultures, grappling with feeling out of place, the advantages of considering perspectives different from your own. The movie is Captain Fantastic. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but you should know going in that this is an indie movie, okay? I think right now it's screening in like five theaters in the whole state of Florida. Now you contrast that with the Bourne repeatery, and it's like, what's the point? I'll tell you what the point is. Movies make you feel things, okay? Indie movies especially, maybe. When you go see an indie movie in the theater, by the way, the previews before the movie are all indies as well. I saw the movie with three other people, and most of us were crying before the movie even started, okay? The previews, they got us. Now, I love this movie. Viggo Mortensen, is that how you say it? He gives a beautiful performance as a father named Ben who is choosing to raise his children in some alternative ways. They live in the woods in a what is essentially a giant, awesome teepee. They're homeschooled, they all have a lot of knives. The opening scene in the movie is this rite of passage where the oldest son like kills a deer essentially with his bare hands and a knife. But as the movie introduces us to this family and their lifestyle, you come to see the dad as a really nuanced character. So he trains his kids in some harsh ways that line up with his personal convictions that many of us might actually consider to be child abuse. In fact, he's later confronted about that in the movie. But he's also very loving toward them and he gives them an incredible amount of freedom. The whole movie really hinges on whether or not you buy into this guy's character. So sometimes you're like totally on board with him. You're like, yes, you follow your convictions, you stick it to the man. But then sometimes he'll take it real far and you're like, Aragorn has lost his ever-loving mind. Now, emotionally speaking, there is a lot of sadness in the movie. The mother dies early on. That's kind of the inciting incident. And even the way that Ben tells the children about that is so brutal. One of his values is that he never lies to his kids. He answers every question they ever ask him with complete and total honesty. Now, I value honesty as well, but I see Ben making these calls and I'm like, whoa, should you really be saying that to a kid? But the movie does a good job of balancing that strong emotion with humor. There's a lot of jokes in the movie, and most of the humor is very smart. It all derives from Ben's character, you know, his truth-telling, his rebellious streak. So these kids, who are raised in the forest to kill their food and, like, speak six languages, have to dive into the real world in order to attend their mother's funeral. So the world that's been set up in the forest, all the family values and rituals, get immediately brought into conflict with things like materialism, consumerism, all the things they were essentially raised to hate. I mean, essentially, this is a movie about family and what it means to live counterculturally and what are the consequences of choosing to live counterculturally. I identified so much with this movie as a parent and I was really challenged, like, do I shield my kids too much? What about the decision that I've made to raise my family in China? That's what many would consider to be an alternative way of raising my kids. What are the consequences of that decision? Like, how has choosing to raise my kids in China affected who they will become. What kind of family am I building? So my kids, like the kids in this movie, are third culture kids. They don't fully identify with the American culture that I come from, and they also don't fully identify with the Chinese culture where they live. So they make their own third culture. So watching the kids in this movie navigate a grocery store or misunderstand things that normal kids their age would know, it was really moving. Now thematically, I think the movie is dealing with a lot of truth versus fantasy. So you've got this fantastical world in the forest where the children skin hides and make jewelry out of feathers and quote Noam Chomsky, but their leader is not a man of fantasy. Ben always tells the truth as he sees it. And his direct way is contrasted with other parents in the film who shelter their children, who tell themselves lies in order to get through hard times. So there's a lot of interplay between his truth and their truth and what, if anything, is ultimately true. Now, it's not a perfect movie. I feel like the homeschool lifestyle is a little bit idealized. Like, we're given the best possible scenario of how this could go, educationally speaking. The forest children come off like geniuses compared to their two cousins who happen to be conveniently morons. There's also what I feel to be a caricature of Christianity presented in the film as just one great big evil representation of organized religion, while the mother's Buddhism is presented as, you know, beautiful freedom. And that's a bit reductive, right? I think probably all religions are equally capable and guilty of becoming organized or oppressive. But this message of fighting to be who you want to be, leading others in ways that some might find crazy for the sake of what you believe in, right? And the questions that the movie asks about truth and what's really valuable, all of it adds up to this incredible picture of freedom in 
community and, and togetherness. It's really powerful. I had high hopes for this movie. I went way out of my way to see it, and I left the theater just inspired by the beauty of the film and really challenged by the questions that it left me with. You know, you walk away from a movie like this and you just ask yourself, like, well, how then shall we live, you know? I think Captain Fantastic suggests that the only truly satisfying way to live is according to what you believe. I mean, it sure sounds true to me. Keep tuning in in August. I got a couple snack comparisons coming your way and another Pen Pals video. Keep an eye out for that. So come back, visit my channel next month, or don't. You know what? Watch what you want to watch. You can't watch it all, right? You got priorities. I understand how it is.